I started an internship at a, a large growing church and they put me over a media department for the student ministry. And so this student ministry grew from about 300 to 800 youth and I had no clue like how to do media, how to do videos and production and all this stuff that we're pretty familiar with now back then. I didn't really know, so I just went and started recruiting a whole bunch of uh, guys and gals from my college and was like, hey, you gotta come help me. Like, you can edit video and you know what a camera does. And um, so that's kind of where I started and kind of took a right turn from being a youth pastor or thought I was going to be into the creative world, media space. Uh, I eventually became the creative director for the entire church. So then I started learning about uh, web d development, social media, uh, video editing, all that sort of stuff at a, at a very high level. And the church, um, you know, grew from about 3,000 to 10,000 people during that time. So it was a pretty wild uh, journey just seeing uh, those tools in action and, and helping people and reaching people. And then my family uh, decided to move up into Kansas City to, to help start a church. So this, this was 2013 where my life took another turn. Thought, thought, man, how cool would it be to, to help pioneer a church? I've got that entrepreneur side of me. Again, kind of meeting in the in the church world of like, man, let's start something brand new. And, and so we were a part of helping start Summit Park Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. And in that journey too, I had gone back and got my master's degree in organizational leadership, was taking kind of high level marketing classes again in that whole journey. And so a part of the church plant journey was, I was kind of looking at all these tools that businesses use to make like a piles of money, you know, whether it's Facebook ads or search engine optimization, branding, uh, website, all, all the stuff that, you know, we're very familiar with in the business space. Well, churches aren't really that familiar with. So my contention kind of going into the church plant was, could we use these same tools not to make money, uh, but to reach people? So in that church plant, we were running uh, Facebook ads, we were doing a ton on, on social media and, and search engine optimization, and and man, it was, it was crazy to see what God did uh, through that effort and people's lives were being changed and marriages restored families, you know, finding finding life and um, So it was like man this stuff is actually working. It's pretty crazy uh, to see God use it And so more and more churches started be like hey, can you show us how to do that? Can you help us? You know learn how to do that and it got to the point where there were so many churches and pastors asking for help that I decided man I can't do this one-on-one -on -one anymore. Let me start putting this in these these concepts into courses and that way it, there's no necessarily limitation you know i i was i was so ecstatic when the bible came out on audio because <laughs> right. i just put it on at the gym yeah, i'm at yeah. the gym you know uh i think tony robbins he calls it net time no extra yeah. time so yeah. if you're driving or you're at the gym or whatever it is i just i listen to it yeah. right it's easier for me to read it than reading it because i had kind of the same challenge yeah. um but i'll give you a, a kind of a metaphor an example of what happens to a lot of people, whether it be the Bible, yeah. whether it be some form of motivation or inspiration that helps them stay in a state of positivity and happiness. Um, and I know when I have those lulls with focusing on God, focusing on the reading or just any type of taking in God's word, I'll find myself down, right? And I'll be like, you know, all of a sudden I'll find myself in that little down realm, like I don't feel right, something's wrong, and I'll be like, what's different? And I'll go, I haven't been reading, I haven't been studying, I haven't been, right? And here's something that I learned years ago because I didn't want to, I told you I was, I was uh, uh, diagnosed with all these different mental health challenges and they tried to prescribe me medicine. A couple of times they did, a couple of times I tried it and I hated it. I didn't like the way it made me feel. Um, so I, I started looking for other ways to feel better, right? And I found certain foods, exercise, certain things help us. But one of the things that I've learned while studying different types of medications and those ups and those downs is that there are a lot of people who will go down on a medication and they need it, right? They do need it. Some people need the medication and they'll take it, they need it and they feel better. And they'll take it for like a month, two months. And it's like, man, their whole life is different. They're happy. They can communicate with people. Cause you know, when we're in those states, we just, we seclude ourselves, right? It's, it's, it's just darkness. And they're happy and they're having fun and their life is better and people around them are like, wow, you're so you're doing well, this and that. And they feel so good, they think they don't need the medication. They don't realize that that medication is doing what it's supposed to do for them and they stop doing the medication and then they fall. 
just like within a week, a couple of weeks, they fall right back to where they were at. Yeah. And then it's so hard to go back and start the medication again because now you're in that darkness and you know nothing matters. I don't care what anybody says and I'm angry and whatever it is. So it's hard to get back. Yep. Now, that's a medication, but it also is the same with studying. Studying the Bible, listening to your motivation, listening to your inspiration. Um, is it? It's not Bob Parker. Zig Ziglar said, uh, do you wait until your car dies from running out of gas before you fill it up? And everybody's like, no, right? He's like, then why do you do that with your mind, with your heart, with what you're studying? That's what people do. They watch the motivation. They listen to something. They read the Bible and they're feeling good and they have a great, you know, they're, they're doing well. They're feeling good. And then they'll stop. And they'll wait until they're all the way dead. Like, man, I feel like crap. I need to, I need to read the Bible or something like that, right? Yeah. Why? Why why wait till your car is out of gas and then you have to go get gas and fill it up? Continue, you fill it up on a regular basis, right? Yourself, do the same yeah, thing with your mind and do the same thing with your heart. I got into just the full-time ministry world and how can I impact lives? I believe Jesus is the answer for every human being. It all starts with that. And I think that I get to share that message with people. Yeah. And uh, that's a beautiful thing for me. So I'm currently on that mission, created the fellowship, which is eventually going to be a space where um, young people, I, I came from the party scene, so I have a huge heart for that culture. Yeah. Um, eventually we're going to have a space, you know, where people can experience, you know, an atmosphere of partying and, and, and community without having to destroy their lives with drugs and alcohol and you know, all these things that I believe just rip people down, tear people down rather than building people up, yep. you know, and so many young people are finding themselves in these spaces every weekend and they're not healthy, they're negative, they're weighing everybody down. And I didn't realize that at the time, yep. but I did, I have a clearer perspective of on that now. And I feel like this generation, they need a space. Yep. You know, so many people I think are looking for that, but it's not out there. And so we're create, we're, we want to create that space. We want to give people that type of an environment where people can come in and just, yeah, we might not have alcohol, but there's genuine connections happening in the room. Like this conversation, and a lot of times you're not finding this stuff at the nightclub, but genuine, sincere, authentic relationships. Yep. You know, so a space where genuine relationships can happen, authenticity is in the room. Yeah, amazing DJs and artists and musicians and just a cr amazing environment, all faith-based. Yep. Uh, actually, we'll, we do interviews like this on the stage. Yep. You know what I mean? So yep. it's like at, during the night you have live music, all these different things going on. But then we also do interviews like this and we share somebody's story of what how, their journey in the, the party scene and then how their life what was that moment of transformation for you which is that God encounter that Jesus encounter and I believe that releases hope in the room because there's so many people that are stuck in that vicious cycle of drugs alcohol all these negative these lifestyle behaviors that they're living that just aren't the best for them and they're looking how can I they're wondering how can I change yep. and so it's not only an amazing space, a community, but it's also a place where lives are being changed and people are being sent onto a new direction and a new path. Yep. And so that's kind of like the long-term goal, the bigger goal. But meanwhile, I have we have a community of young people in the city of Sacramento and I'm raising up people to show them how to just influence. You know, like I, I, I believe I, I, God has given me an influence in Sacramento and I've been able to help impact a lot of lives just by walking in who I am. You know, I'm not forcing anything down about anybody's throat, but I'm walking out who I am. Yep. And I know that when I get in certain conversations that I can feel God starting to work. And I just look for those moments and I partner with him in those moments because there's so many people that are hurting. There's so many people that are broken and I have the answer once again. And so I'm raising up a bunch of young people in the city of Sacramento as influencers yeah. to impact and bring change within the city. So I currently do that full time. I'm full time looking to bring impact, looking to help change lives, looking, seeing how I can serve. And then I'm raising up a team of young people to be doing the same thing and just teaching them what it really means to be an influencer yeah. and really influence for God's kingdom, which I believe is the best influence that we could be making. It's money well spent when you can invest in getting that type of input into your life, into your mind. Uh, it, man, do it. If you don't have mentors, and I, I agree, Adrian, with you, like you, you basically need different mentors for different almost aspects of your life and of your business. Um, so I've got, and I've got a lot that they don't even know my name. Like I've invested in their courses or their content. They don't have a clue who I am, but they've definitely shaped the direction 
of my business, of my future. Uh, so I've got uh, one guy that I mentioned that's um, in kind of more the business space, not not working with churches, but uh, helps um, helps me understand business. And then I've certainly got some spiritual mentors. I've got um, some local guys here that are running businesses that are probably 10 times you know my size but they've gone through this journey so they're helping me understand like how you grow through the different stages uh, of this uh, early on too I I noticed in in the Christian space there wasn't even a place for Christian entrepreneurs uh, to, to get together so we created a, a Facebook group of just a handful of Christian entrepreneurs. That's kind of been kind of a peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. There's been a lot of us on the same journey. Um, so man, I, I agree with you that it's, it's absolutely crucial that if you have an area in your life that you're wanting to go to the next level, man, find somebody who's already there and figure out a way to get them speaking into your life because that's really, man, I don't know if there's anything else quite like it that can help you level up in life, in your spiritual life, in business. Uh, yeah, I agree, man, wholeheartedly on that front.